housemates we in the house as welcome back to our channel welcome back i'm jimmy and i'm sandy so and this is the Gwenya's house Gwenya's house welcome back to another episode of living this is episode four yo it's nice to actually like one four episodes i know it's like one two three four but like... it's not a lot but it's a lot <laughs> yeah the reason we're actually out of the house and like we're recording from another place is because it's actually our um eight year anniversary today and we came and we, we we came to ghana where are we eight year and one day uh um moana lodge no 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 moana spa but this is in daba hotel Indaba. yeah why didn't daba or in daba hotel and spa place is so cool but yeah let's actually just get into the conversation like we've been together for eight years and everything and um obviously we've been posting and saying oh yeah happy eight year anniversary it's been thank you for the happiest eight years of my life yeah. Thank you for the happiest year of my life. This is happiest eight years of my life. And um, one thing I want us to talk about is struggle in a relationship, what it actually means to us and why we've made it in eight years and not left. Mm. You know, like, yeah. Yeah, well, cheers to, cheers to more conversation more living and many more happy years together. Yes. A lot of things that you see when people post like their anniversaries and stuff, it's always, oh, we've been through so much together or, you know, um, I've stayed through, like, I've, in fact, it's not even when they Actually, post, it's no. when you get into... People never say, oh. I've stayed through. They say, like, yeah, we've been through a lot together. And then there's always that car that's beat up like crazy and you have, like, a lot of bandages around it. And, yeah. like, I'm not judging and I'm not saying anything about that. Like, if you stayed and you guys worked through the issues and everything. But for me, the thing of, like, romanticizing struggle, like, saying... 10 years together and we've like weathered through storms but the storms are what we caused yeah like, like i don't i never want our relationship to be something like where we caused the storms yeah like you know when we when we of like officially got together because for the longest time i had been i don't know if it's really asking to me out but like saying that we should make it official and stuff it took a while but then gonna what why not you used to say no 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 like finally when i realized like i was oh, okay you know what mm, i like this guy i'm in love and i was like okay yeah i said yes we can be boyfriend and girlfriend but please on these terms and conditions I don't remember all my terms and conditions, but you should remember because you were supposed to list my terms and conditions. I was very serious. <laughs> I was very like, yeah, I'll be your girlfriend, but these are the terms and conditions. But I know one of them was like, please don't say I love you forever because if this relationship is ending in four months, um, now we said we love you forever, it's going to hurt unnecessarily. And <laughs> brah, like, it's unnecessary. Like, there's no I love you forever here. And um, don't lie for, don't lie unnecessarily because me and lying, like, why are you lying, brah? And, and also you didn't want to pet me, which forever. is so weird. Oh, because, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yes. And guys, I had a whole list. I was like, yeah, please, pet names are stupid. <laughs> Don't call me by my name. <laughs> <laughs> now if Sandisa had to say I'm sorry. If Sandisa right now had to call me to me, <laughs> I'd be crumbling inside. But at the time when I, I laid down the laws, I was like, don't even call me by pet name. My name is to me. Please. And I'll call you Sandis. Now we're like babe, babe. Like a baby is a name. <laughs> Yeah. It was actually good that that happened because then it kind of set the tone for our relationship that um we can communicate in a sense that like you weren't scared to speak about things that you felt strongly about, the things that you wanted, you know. Cuz 
that that plays a that 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 has played a very important role in our relationship because it's also helped us in situations where as we've grown and for example when now we had got into a, we've got into a point where we had to involve our families in our relationship because now we were getting married um it we were able to speak first about before we got to the families we able to speak first about what does this relationship mean to us what do we want from each other what do we expect from each other and those are the like it's like i don't want to say the 10 commandments because <laughs> even like because because even the 10 commandments like really were it, it, like really people are here and there like we're here and there <laughs> apart like, them, but don't talk about 10 commandments <laughs> but, right now i think what you are basically talking about is like the the basis like we formed our relationship based on honesty, openness and just being open with like I think maybe yeah, just being so open with each other, having open communication, just being mm. ourselves with each other. Like from the first day I was my crazy self. <laughs> I was so my crazy. I was my obsessive crazy control freak self um in our first ever like actual um encounter encounter. so it's just been the tone of be yourself bro like be like that early on we stated one relationship like what what do you want from each other like for example now i I wasn't like trying. I didn't want somebody that's going to come here and like be my mom or something. You know what I mean? No, I think that was not your thing. Actually, your biggest thing was like you don't want someone that didn't care as much as you cared. Yeah. You really didn't. You don't want someone that was just like you are once. Like you don't want a one-sided relationship. Yeah. You don't want where you cared and someone didn't care. And you didn't want to be in a relationship where someone wanted to live a separate life to what you were living. Yeah. And um, even though it was not something that I was intentionally seeking at that point, it's something that worked for me because I, if we were together, why do we have separate lives? Why am I, you know, why am I mm. having a dingy, like dodgy like separate life what what's that all about for me what was important at that point i didn't want my heart to be broken based on i fell in love then we started making promises that we couldn't keep oh yeah that was also another term and conditions like for me don't 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 promise like like don't make promises yes the promises you can keep like don't make promises in the first place don't lie because it it always goes back to me by to the lying. If you're going to promise something, that means you're going to keep it. And if you can't keep it, don't make the promise initially. Like, people actually always, 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 always say things and then they don't keep them. And it's it's a, it's a very big thing. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I think it's that... I think that thing of not keeping promises also like and don't make promises until unless you you are going to keep them. Yes, it's true that people shouldn't mm-hmm. do that. But it also takes away from that sometimes you do make a promise but you can't keep it. So mm-hmm. it's because it, it's not always um to It's in, not black and white. Yeah. We've learned that as we've grown together. Mm-hmm. Also when you were listing all these terms and conditions and things like that, you were also basing them from previous things that have mm. happened to you. And also, Nami, when I was stating things that I wanted or like like knowing what I wanted was also based on previous traumas. Mm. But the nice thing is that we've grown together. Those terms mm. and conditions ended up being, yes, they were the foundation of the relationship. but Yeah, they just ended up being guidelines, but yeah. they're not as set in stone um like how initially it was don't yeah. call me by a pet name don't make promises you yeah. can't keep it's don't like, do this and this and this like and this as you grow of, like, a yeah, person that yeah you want. it is like, like <laughs> literally i used to keep a list of my ideal guy this is tall handsome smart or this and this and this and this till i realized like those things don't even like guys please if i meet um obviously it's important to for me personally it's important 
to procreate with someone that is actually smart and likely my husband is very smart and he's saying and that was important for me but i realized that i hate smart mouths i hate people that every time now you must be smart in every conversation i know please please be fun a man must be, be intelligent funny. also be intel but a man must be funny like bra kind yeah. of what wait there was even a recent a recent encounter oh yeah <laughs> it was at the shops i don't know where i was oh i think it's where we did the the whole at miss surprise um where you were buying clothes for me so i was walking around and this girl i think was looking for an outfit and she has her phone on loudspeaker this guy is breaking down numbers uh the situation technicalities of a thing and this girl is just like yeah yeah, yeah. and i'm just like I could never be with a guy like that. I just want you to be stupid and show me. Oh, look at that. It's red. This is the outfit and I will laugh and be like, oh, you're so stupid. Because that that was actually more important to me than you being smart all the time. So you have to even realize that in your list when you say, I want a smart guy, you have to be like, I want him to be smart like business wise or career wise I but saying, i don't want you to be like a smart mouth that's continually that's why i was saying, that's mm. why I was saying intelligent and not smart mm. because an intelligent person is also cognizant of situations so like they're also cognizant of like okay this is a time to do whatever this is a time to do one two three four if of, yeah. you term it like that yeah that's true but yeah it, it it's it's like it's always in the small things but a lot of times when people go into relationship they go into like this very less format or this must be set in stone and everything and that's very impo- important that you have your deal breakers and you mm. have the things that you are willing to compromise on yeah and a lot of people think um, are scared of relationships and I've seen like with a lot of people my age which I find very valid because I have the same I had and I have the same fears like um, we grew up in a as 90s mid 90s we grew up at a time where like marriage at a time maybe before it was worse off than what we had a view of marriage to be like if you're gonna choose marriage or like the whole thing when you're growing up how you always live at how 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 to how to pay how to be how to pay how to be how to lose saying how to be in my so marriage is made like it's a scary thing other people are drawn to it because you think, oh, I'm good at cleaning and, and yeah, cooking and this material. and this, so I'm marriage material. But you never think of finding a compatible partner. Uh, yeah, it's it's actually true. I think the chats, the chats around. In fact, first and foremost, there are no chats about mm. relationships mm. because our joy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are a child. How do you So they always skip <laughs> the jola <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, it's always skip the whole jola ring part. Yeah. They skip through it, <laughs> and they're already speaking about marriage. Oh, mm. to pay about to what was mm. saying, and a lot of like exactly. all of those things. And then, yeah. yeah, actually, exactly. So the first thing is that there's, there's no chats around a relationship or whatever. So most of of the time when most of the time you learn you're yeah, learning things on your own most of the time Maukala to get feelings for boys or to get feelings for like you know mm. or you start yeah well you learn those things on your own you get influenced a lot by by what you're watching on tv your friends because yeah because yeah, we're talking about when we were growing up social oh, yeah. media wasn't a big it wasn't even a thing at that time it was it was movies it, it, was, it was movies, movies tv both generations both bo generations things like that cypher not on your tv i'm saying cypher yeah. when he acted on um generations and his girlfriend was the card lady was a kaylee 
Ke, I don't remember. Ke, Ke something. Kendall, Ken, Kelly, Ka, Kawad. Guys, Kara, if you remember, Kaylee, if you remember, Ka- yeah. please, if you're watching us on YouTube, please put in the comment section who that person was because like mm. we don't remember. But yeah, that's where you get the idea of 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 like like relationships. So mm. you know, you don't really talk to you don't necessarily talk to your parents. Yes, obviously some people had parent like relationship with their parents they could talk, but generally the concept is you don't really talk to your parents about that. You speak to your friends mm. and your friends also stump suck like, things from their bum or from like Yeah, their like all of us, aunts, like or, everyone is like, just like <laughs> trying to, you know, mm. you learn everything from your friends about relationships and what they're supposed to be. And mm. then your first heartbreak kind of determines how you feel about relationships and everything and so forth. It builds up to when you now you grow older, when now you're getting into serious relationships, then everything is based on outside. You forget about you. Mm. And like when you're going into a relationship, you are meant to kind of, not meant to, but the ideal situation is you are meant to and you are meant to like understand yourself and understand what you need from a person and understand what you expect from a relationship because that's so true because a relationship yeah. is meant to serve you it's not based on okay you this is what the this, other person as well yes yeah. not you serving the other person you are meant to serve each other mm. and you only serve each other when you both know what's okay what is what that you, is it that you that's want? serving for me yes. and what is it that's serving yes. for you Yes, and from and my perspective, not from what society exactly, has not from told what me. outside exactly. So that's why that's mm. why I was making that point of like it actually starts from very. If you like think back about it, it starts from very young because mm. it starts from the thing of not being able to talk. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know what's weird? Uh, um, when I met you, um, it was it was a culture, personality, everything shock for me how you were so comfortable with yourself, comfortable with everything like that you know, you were comfortable in your knowledge, comfortable with yourself, your body, you were confident, you were everything. And it was so different. Mm. It was actually shocking for me because we were polar opposites. Mm. The two big opposites, there were two. It was me being comfortable with myself and confident or whatever. Mm. And it was you being brutally honest. Mm. Those were oh, the yeah. Two, the po- those me- were the two. <laughs> One like, thing, big, yeah, like the like, polar, we were like polar opposites. Yeah. When we met, yeah. we were not, obviously we couldn't have been each other's textbook because you want someone that's gentle with you, even with your emotions. And when you met me, like even now, like I'm someone that's, if your brain stinks, it stinks. If I w- I'm honest, if I don't like something, I don't like and something. And the reason, yes. Um, and, and I'm sorry for keeping on like mm. interjecting, but the reason you're actually even mentioning if your brain stinks, your brain stinks, yeah. because that was that one was of the our biggest, first like, biggest fight. <laughs> because like it was like I'm being insensitive and rude yeah. where I was being honest. But one thing about Sandy, he was very confident in himself and he was very, you know, and as someone who's not yeah, confident, was, 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 is, is. Sandy so was <laughs> and is the most confident person that I know. And that's what I love about him. And that's, I've taken some of those traits. I am nowhere near to the knowing and like your personality even matching what people see and everything because we have even went to a bible like the the personality thing at church oh yeah the when you went to the what is it called the discourse the discourse yeah the discourse is like a personality course and his his personality and what people perceive of him exactly matches because he's so true to himself that there's no discrepancies like Sandizo is what you see of him and for me that was actually like refreshing oh, I'm like gl- I'm gl- I'm gl- I'm gl- I'm gl- no I'm gl- actually no but it was a relationship <laughs> thing like it was actually so 
refreshingly awkward for me. I remember the the other time when you like you know you want this and I was just like <laughs> do I really want this? <laughs> But he was just himself so much that I fell in love with the fact that he's himself, he's confident, he is well like he is strong-willed and he's everything I'm not. And that's strange, right? Like everyone wants to gravitate towards someone that, and that's what you think. You want someone that's yeah. exactly like you. But actually, I, I can't I, imagine being with myself. Yeah, I but I, be. yeah, <laughs> like literally, I gravitated to so many traits about you that were different to me. But at the same time, we share the same things that are so many. Like, um. We love laughing. We yeah. actually we don't love laughing. We are just people who generally laugh about everything. Yeah. I was serious. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to add in also talking about this that it's true that we gravitated towards each other because we were we were opposites, but not directly opposites. We were actually like puzzle pieces that fit together mm. because. Um, What do me brought? I didn't catch that. Ah, yeah, boy. Mm. Yeah, like, yeah, so one bag. I phone. Yeah, Your personality, mm. right? It was for me. It was also refreshing. Mm. I know I've said this a lot of times on our channel, and like I know I go back to the story a lot of times where you were like you gave me an ultimatum and things mm. like that. It was refreshing for me to. Be with somebody that knows what they want, because I knew what I wanted as mm. well. Even though I didn't directly say it, because like remember, I used to say it to you long before, and you thought I was joking mm. when I said like I I want stability and things like that. And I saw I don't know how I actually to be honest with you, I don't know how I was saying that in you because. At that time, we hadn't even spent so much time together or anything like that. But I like I want stability and all of that and. Why are you looking like that? You don't remember that? No, I do. I'm listening. Oh, but yeah, like I want, I want stability. I want, I want like to. And it wasn't and the words weren't settled down, but it's just I want something I can call home and something that can like give direction to my life. I think those were more or less the words that I said, and I was and I was serious when I said that. I don't even know I was even speaking like that to somebody. I don't know. That, like, <laughs> I I don't know what about me felt like home to you yeah. because there was this other time that was the most weird thing ever. I just remember there was a time I was still sleeping with shoes. There was a phase in my life where I slept with shoes. Now he's in a thighs on my shoes, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sadusa came comes um we used to live in the same com not complex flat building because the flat had A B C A D whatever, and he comes downstairs and then he knocks in the morning. Not a morning person, so I was still sleeping in my PJs and everything. Open the door, cause my roommate knew the door was not for her. So I open the door and then he's just like, "Oh, can you please hug me? I just miss home," and I was just puzzled at like. If you miss home, why do you come to me? Because maybe God just like injected something. Because he was just like, yeah, you know, I'm like tired, did I'm I tired feel of you. like home to you that no, you like, needed to come to saying. me if you maybe miss God just, home? Maybe God just injected something, and I was like, I'm tired of you busy messing your life up, brah. Like I'm going to literally take you <laughs> and put you here into in front of you something put yourself. that's going to make your life <laughs> actually. Happen because my life exactly like, that's so like there's so much I'm putting in like it's so much I'm like that is betting or that's like sitting on your shoulders but you're busy playing around with your stupid ass. So, but yeah, like I I also don't I also don't know I also mm. don't know but like in this eight years we've been together from very early on every single time the another reason why. 
I don't understand the reason why I stayed because oh my god, like oh baby. Yeah, it's like that. like you, there was oh. a time you never wanted to leave. <laughs> that, Guys, that every please, single time. there was no like <laughs> hey staying or leaving. There was no staying. Yeah. And like it, it's like the whole reason why this relationship has worked and we've been together and stayed together. And yeah, so every single time you have proven without me asking, without you even realizing, mm. just by being you you have always been what I've needed. Mm. What I wanted, yes, but more what I needed every single time without even me realizing and without even you realizing you've, you've been that for me. I think also another, another thing that was very refreshing is that from the very beginning of our relationship, mm. sitting here eight years later and thinking and talking from the very beginning of our relationship, there was no faking Mm. There was no need for me because I've never been a person that wants to like try mm. and like change to mm. make somebody else happy. You know what I mm. mean? There was never a need for me to do a cause, time way, to try because like, because obviously we're being both like coming, a rich guy or being yeah. this type of guy was a necessity. Yeah, a necessity. and also from and also from you, I had never picked up. Um, I never really picked up any sort of you trying to be something just to make me happy mm. or there's never been a time where i've picked up that now you are giving up yourself to be with me mm. you know because i've never I, I i've i don't i've never wanted to be with a person that has to give up themselves or sacrifice themselves to be with me because mm. like why are you giving up your life for me bruh mm. like you know, I don't want that responsibility. I don't want that on my shoulders. Mm. Like, if you if you want to be with me, if you want to be in my life, then you want to be in my life. You choose to be in my life. You're not mm. just like you know, just like it's not a thing where like now it's a matter of convenience or yeah, or, like know, a relationship uh, of convenience yeah. or a, a lot of times it's that. Like, or it's um, a perfect situation. It's a perfect or, situation, so you know, I must stay and everything like that. But yeah. what people don't realize is, is, as okay, I don't know if men have the same. Some men do. That's why some men are with women that they don't feel like are their people. They are with wife material, but they are they are not with the people that they really want to be with. Mm. But with a majority of women. In the back black culture, you are grow. I think from the day you start understanding things, yeah. you are groomed to be a wife. That's a certain way, yeah. and also your expectations towards marriage are always like your man is gonna be like this, so you must be like this. And also, and those and type also of things, like men, this is what uh, you should expect from relationships, yep. and what this is what you should expect from, which is so crazy, right? Yeah, it's 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 also you also think about these things later on when you're older. It's very crazy to think mm. that you are taught about how to act as opposed to being taught to learn yourself. The only times I started having chats about um, how to be how to be a husband mm. and things like that was after I had started initiating <laughs> conversations <laughs> about <laughs> being, being I want to get married. Oh, yeah. You know, so that's, a, Wait, that's, me, that's for me. When, where, 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 like, as a you, woman, your whole from, life is it's, like, oh, <laughs> uh, you want to be a wife? Like, I'm like, exactly. who said I want? Like, and that's <laughs> the one thing. I think that's the one thing you made me knowing that I don't want to be a wife. I don't want to yeah. be married. I Like, that's mm. one thing I did not want. I don't want to be married and now be expected to wake up at seven, do whatever, yeah. whatever. Because that's what you're conditioned your whole life. So you either want to run towards it or away from it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just gonna talk from my perspective. Yes, yes. Like, I'm like, not let's like talk the, the spokesperson yeah. for men or whatever. Mm. But like from from my perspective, like we're always the the chats. It was like. You know, low key conversations, there was in comments and stuff like that. For us, when we're talking, when they talk about the opposite sex or whatever, like um, a woman or whatever, whether it's the old man or the uncles or whatever, it's just always like a chat. Like, it's never, it's actually always about you 
be building confidence and you kind of I don't being know, an asshole. Not 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 being an asshole necessarily, but yeah. Like um fati or you 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 get Yeah, you tell a wife um fatu achelo, um fatu like you are the man of the house. Exactly. Like you are you are being Ex- trained to be the man yes, of the house, being, the voice trained, that's yes, only trained heard. to be the man of the house, you're trained to be strong, yeah, tr- like it's it's like not I, and I don't use the word trade because but like But the, that's kind of that's, the, the, that's the the like exactly the, that's the tone mm, that's the tone around it like you being a husband and you being a husband and being a man also like just being a man in general it's just like yeah you shouldn't you don't take shit whatever you need to be strong you can't be weak mm. you know things like that even now when it even comes to a woman okay, you know things like that yeah you must yo you know mm. like i know i'm not saying a lot especially if you're listening on spotify yeah. the the, the problem is that my my husband and i have established a language of our own <laughs> yeah. um especially i think maybe it's worse because we don't speak the same language uh, so we got to a point where there's like me, like um mannerisms and certain actions and mm. things that both of us understand and no one understands. Yeah. <laughs> like, so Sadiso so can say, uh, I know what he means. And okay. I can, like, even the action he makes, I know what he means. And even me, I I I struggle a lot with not finishing my sentences or just stopping mid-sentence. Mm. But he kind of gets, okay, it still frustrates him because sometimes I need to say exactly what I'm saying. But a lot we have a language of our own. But for the sake of the podcast, let please me actually let me just be say detailed actually there's one sentence for the I'll housemates. Say. There's one sentence. For, listen, but wh- like, when they say be in thought about listen, it, what do they do? What do they I'll say, say to you? That everybody will get Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> that's the only sentence that I need to say and everybody will understand exactly. Like and yeah, no. Yeah, you can't like, be disrespected. You don't, you, don't, you won't be disrespected by a woman. Yeah, uh, yes, if you don't yeah. understand what you, you like, you will you can't be disrespected by a woman, yeah. by a child, by umfana, like by like, like some boy. Yeah, well, but that's the thing. Like men are just grown to be like, <laughs> exactly. no one must disrespect you. And then people start defining even disrespect. So. Yeah. So yeah. there's that thing of like thank you thank you thank like, you mm, like even the disrespect is not even based on something that you would as you a person would, as a person would find, find disrespectful, disrespectful. Like people general, define disrespect general. in general like as in yeah now if my woman were to say no to giving me water that's disrespect <laughs> and i'm just like if i'm dying on the bed now I must wait yo you must stand not begazella Bambi, Bambi, can I? No, no, no. Like I when you, Musadu, Utahati, Baka, Kabahali. I know that. And the thing, what, what to do, Faz, what to do, whatever. Like that thing, okay. Hey, when I, even if you are struggling, your your husband must live soft, must be soft, or else we are delil. And they are taught, okay. You must not disrespect them. Yeah, so, so, but, like, you know, just to bring this back to the things we've learned in the eight years, mm. and, like, relationships and stuff, and going back to, for us, at the beginning of our relationship, we were very, we were very open and honest about our relationship. That was the greatest thing, because we would always choose ourselves, and that's based on we were conversation, we would speak, Mm. who would speak together from the beginning of our relationship like you said at the beginning before we decided okay we're actually going to label this thing and call it a relationship we you spoke about this what i want whatever one two three four and we were able to do that so it's made it easy to choose us every choose each other every time for example the struggles we have faced in this past eight years of being together have never been a thing based on somebody disrespecting a deal breaker or somebody going or somebody um going out choosing of. going out of their way to 
to not put the relationship first. Mm. That's something we've done from the beginning, something looking back on the eight years, something that has actually made us be able to stay together for eight years and eight happy years, eight years which had joyful, eight years where in our eyes we don't even see it's been an eight years that's a struggle it's been an eight years that's a breeze it's been an eight years that has been fun yes it's been yeah. yes it's been for the relationship it has been the best the eight years ever yes. like i i don't even hesitate in saying that because it it has been the happiest easiest eight years of our lives has life because we went through so many in the in eight years you can go through a lot of life stages yes, which is growth yeah. and everything and we had to experience growth separately but together we were able to support each other through the life changes yes. individually can i just finish mm. off what i was saying like in the eight years the things which we the, the with regards to the relationship there hasn't been we've gone through a lot mm. with regards to each other. No, there, no. there hasn't been a, oh, you know, these eight years, you know, they've been eight tough years with regards to our relationship with, oh my God, like we have, you know, babe, <laughs> oh my God. Like, have with you ever been to that? To have you ever been to that wedding? Yeah. What did, what? <laughs> Where people are like, yeah, a lot of people said we would break up, but here we are. I like, the marriage is not gonna fix anything, sis. So mm. It's just gonna make it worse, mm. and it's just gonna make it harder for you to leave. But anyway, like, please, we are talking about us right now. Yes. So yeah, it has actually been the easiest in terms of like relationship and us making life convenient and easy for each other. And I feel like that's what relationships too should be. People yes. forget about the fact that relationships the people that you choose to be in your life because that's what happens with relationships and that's what it should be. You should choose the person you decide to be with because it will make life much happier and easier and everything for you. The person you are with shouldn't be making life more difficult for you. Shouldn't be like making... like. And it's not even with the big things like both cheating and stuff. Yeah. It's even with the little things like... The person you are with shouldn't be like making it hard for you to transition into work because now you have to like be preparing for this job that's so tedious and also be like, oh yeah, my man is a child. He can't put on his shoes. He can't put on his pants. He can't make his lunch without me. Those type of things. Yes. I'm not judgmental. I'm saying those are the things that would have made it difficult for me. And I wouldn't have been with someone that makes it more hard mm. for me because transitioning into work was hard for me. But now, like, if he expected things that my own dad never even expected from me, or like, that was a big thing, actually. I've, I've also mentioned that you're not going to treat me like how my dad never treated me. Also, can I just also say like no, please can I also just say mm. one thing? Mm. Like it's different, yeah. You know, I don't want us to have the conversation like um you're not going to treat me like like Yeah, like, no, because, we are not gonna go yeah, you're right. Yeah, okay, go go on, sorry. Yeah, mm. because I, I like you know times like as a person you grow up and change mm. and i think it's 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 not it's not right to base on the person that you are going to end up mm. being with based on how a certain person treated you in in your life an important figure in your life i don't want to say just that, i think but uh, okay mm. continue so i can answer you but yeah. I, I want to actually explain my 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 reference to my dad Yes, I yes with no. a lot of people. Yeah. Yes, I know. I'm I'm like before I continue, I'm not discrediting what mm. you're saying. No, no, like, no. I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm saying like continue like, so I can explain it. Yeah, well. like mm. you know, I just wanted to say that I think the biggest part that people get wrong, like just when it comes to marriage and relationships and things like that, is that people forget themselves. Mm. 
Mm. You you really you really forget you really it's like it's it's like you forget yourself mm. you forget to uh, and I I don't want to say the danger is of like choose yourself because now it's like yeah fuck everything else it's all about what mm. I want but like you like when you are saying like your you, the person you are going to be with you are, you, who you want to bring in your life needs to make your life more simple it's also a thing of it's easy to to be of service to somebody else if when supporting. when that mm. person who you are of service to knows how to be serv- of service to you mm. so it's it's it's, it's you can very... be of service to someone if they are being of service to you and yes. it, it becomes easy it becomes it's easy. not like a chore it's yes. not difficult it's not oh it's part of yes. marriage i have to do it it's yes. part of like oh, i'll easily do this for my husband because he easily does things yes for me. and these things start in the relationship mm. just going back to what you're saying that like you know like like the the comment that a lot of people like like that some people say that yeah they thought we we're going to break up but look at us now getting married like it's it starts before mm. it starts before you get to a point where you mm. want to get married um and some people i don't use the word a lot and then fuck it i'm not trying to be politically correct but like a lot of people like want the want the ring or want the marriage or want the status of marriage and forget that this thing starts in a relationship mm. marriages that work are partnerships mm. it's not marriages where like when we like when they're compromised but from our perspective also just to put that out the mm. disclaimer mm. it's not marriages it's not marriages where like it's you work through the difficulties if you have a deal breaker and that deal breaker is broken don't yes stay. don't stay it's yes, not a yes, difficulty it's not, don't stay yes yes it's not mm. black and white for people to stay or whatever but if that things that are a deal breaker deal breakers are important mm. and deal breakers are things that should be accounted for and established and, and established in the early stages of the relationship because that's how then if you are a person that wants to be in a long term relationship that will turn into a partnership and turn into a marriage and turn into a lifelong relationship deal breakers have to be established mm. And do and like going back to the thing about like what you're saying like about um like Nilkand and whatever and a deal breakers shouldn't be based on treatment from before but that treatment obviously plays a big role in how you perceive like the opposite sex if like you are close to your to your mom or dad or whatever all of them they, they play a big for role. me but yes. um uh, okay cool the thing is there's there's a lot to unpack here because mm. for me i can easily say that i mirror what my husband is supposed to be based on how my dad treated me yes and my dad treats me like an egg i'm an egg and if i want something i get it that's what my dad treated me like and my dad has been a present figure has been you know has actually shaped a lot of how yeah. i feel a man must be mm. in my life and That's a lot true. of adjustments had to be made yes. because sanjus was not supposed to be my dad yeah but my dad shaped a lot of how i feel a man should be in my life but i'm saying i'm not gonna now take my kanda self yeah and take yourself into being Rafa's me <laughs> Kilkanda, guys, please. My dad, <laughs> if I'm I'm waking up at 2 a.m., my TP, 2 p.m. is going to be like, oh, do you still need some more sleep, my daughter? And then now go to someone who expects me to sleep, wake up at 8. I po, even my employer doesn't want me to wake up at 8. Please say, what about those type of things? Yeah. And if that's not important for you and you feel like, oh, you know what? For my man, I'll wake up at 5. That means it's not a deal breaker for me. Yes, but for me, the word is deal I breaker. want someone that will respect the fact that like I like my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, the, one thing the about way the way the way I'm making it like it's important, but guys, you've seen me in every situation, which situation where I have had to wake up early or whatever. My dad is actually the one that had to be the one that wakes up me up in the morning, and he's so uh, miserable and everything. But also, he's also fed into my stubbornness. I'm telling my dad, but and whatever. and I'm like, 
Maga papa, I'm hungry. And we like just eat it. There's nothing. Bon Toto, like, I'm spoiled mm. in that way. And when I met Sandy, so I I was spoiled in a sense of like I expected everything, everything. Hore, he's gonna treat me like my dad. But also I had to adjust to the fact that like this person is also my partner. He's not my dad, he's my partner. But also there was mm. communication involved. Mm. Oh yes, yes. There was a yes, lot of yes, communication yes, yes. involved. Like it, another thing, I will keep on saying in the eight years we've been together, what I've learned is in another thing that I've learned in the eight years of us being together is that the communication is also important. It's so important. Because, you That's know, it's very thing. easy. It's very easy at the beginning of a relationship. In fact, I'll say early stages. It can even be into a year, two years into a relationship. You are still trying to impress somebody mm. by denying yourself or, mm. or like trying mm. to act like mm. or whatever, which again is a red flag, mm. it's, which is a huge red flag. But the nice thing for us, which we're blessed with is that like, because even before we dated, you come like, like I, I don't want to play it off. Like it's a small thing for you it's to have, thing. for you to have said, yeah, I don't want, don't make promises you can't keep. Don't do one to yes, and I know it's a joke now. I'm saying it's a checklist, like whoever gets everything in their checklist, or whatever. But it was very important because for me, it showed me that number one, yes, you do want to be with me. Mm. Number two, even though you do want to be with me, this is what you expect from me. Mm. And number three, that you will communicate if something is not what you signed up for, or it's mm. not what you are willing to. Mm. do that that was very important so like you know it, it's easy for someone in a relationship to like um like going back to what i was saying that the communication is important when there were things that bothered me about your behavior mm. or things that you would do or say i would communicate about it mm. yes obviously i wouldn't communicate about it first because i would like be like okay what you know, <laughs> like <laughs> about my behavior. <laughs> yeah, you know, but like, he's also like such a dad with your behavior. <laughs> When they were saying about your behavior, like it's a, it's like I was being reckless, I was being delinquent. <laughs> like in a, I was like, a it's delinquent. Like, it's like we're in a, like we're in a opposite situation. Your, your young lady, your behavior, your behavior has been very is being very appalling. <laughs> Okay, yeah, no, but, I get but, it. But, but, like, you, talk, but, talk. but, yeah, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, we're able to talk about it, but and and you 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 are very receptive of it. The funny thing is that at the beginning I wasn't receptive of you being calling honest. me out. Mm -hmm. Not just being honest, calling me out. I was not very receptive to that. I think it's also something even now, eight years later, it's still something I'm still working on. To be honest, if I'm like a hundred percent honest, it's something that I'm also still I'm actually still working on. But it's a, it's very important. And guys, just again, when we say like when we talk about this, it's not like we're saying, Oh, we've been together for eight years. Oh yes, we like oh we my are god. The holy no, grail of relationships. It's, 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 it's not, not we are hardly it's, perfect. It's, it's like, not that. The, and, and, not, and, and I want mm -hmm. to say, okay, oh sorry, babe, please say. Yeah, even not, this that you say like I talk over him or mm. Okay, I actually, I'm not going to say he talks over me. I'm the one, I'm the talker over people. Yo, me, when my head starts running. But anyway, please mm. talk, I'm sorry. Like, we're not experts. We're mm. not, like, definitely, we're not role models. We're not, like, yes, this is a relationship goals like oh this is what you want to achieve and like I, I i want to put that disclaimer out there as mm. well we work we work well together and the reason we work well together is because of a lot of the things we're going we say in our podcast things we've said before in on our now uh, in our on our youtube channel we work well together and things like that but the the, the reason why we're even still together is because we were able to Firstly, God blessed us with each other, mm. and God blessed us with us being like this for each other. Mm. But beyond that, 
it's like the things are talking about we were able to communicate you know we chose each other from the get-go we chose to be together we're lucky to be in a position where we can choose each other we're lucky to be in a mental position to even be thinking about that because we're kids what it's do we choose we're, and, we're kids. and the what thing is we about, like we <laughs> like, the fact that we made it a ch- it was a choice mm. basis it was not a uh reaction it was a choice everything we've done in in our relationship was a choice and yes it was a choice a choice there's a lot of times of questions there's a lot of times of questions each other and asked and asked about stuff like remember there was a time you when we say what the feels and you asked me like could it be a deal breaker if i wasn't a christian Remember you oh yeah, that. yeah, I did. You know, there's been a lot of conversations that we've had, and they, there's been they, there was a lot of that. But again, it all just it just goes back to the key fact. This mic, this mic, and us talking with our hands. Are you going to listen to me now? Thank you. <laughs> it's and your hands. It's my it's <laughs> hands. Like it all just goes back down to the communicating part of it within our relationship that we've actually from the get go communicated mm. and it's you know it's like it's a hard it's but also it's a hard thing mm. to communicate with your partner um and now it's hard and please i'm not saying struggle mm. i mean like it just like just how general it's a hard thing to communicate about feelings or hard a hard thing to communicate honestly about where you're coming from yeah it's, but it's not even your partner it's even in, in general, any relationship in it's general, so hard to communicate because at the end of the day as humans you never know what the next person is feeling mm. you never know what the next person is pe- perceiving a situation or whatever but the only thing we owe it to each other is to be honest and to speak out what we are truly feeling and mm. hopefully the next person is also honest yes. and they speak what they are really feeling yes mm. and also something that's actually important that we've actually done Oh well for me you know when we got together I was coming okay let me just actually put a whole let me just put context into what I'm about to say now and my first heartbreak shaped my life I'm not even going to lie about that that heartbreak and also um my mom's love for me also shaped also shaped um how I've dealt with relationships The reason I'm also confident is because I wasn't always confident even before like um when when I was young when I was young uh, um even before the whole Australia thing mm. I didn't I I don't really remember a, a lot of the things but it's things my mom would so would say like later on in my life and stuff mm. but even when I was young uh, I was picked on mm. and things like that when we went to Australia obviously because I was black and all of those things i was bullied as well when he came back from australia i i don't even understand how it's different but yes i was bullied whatever but my mom was yeah, always different because you're confident and you know yourself and people are scared of that so i can imagine that you were bullied throughout your life because your family pushes confidence and everything so mm. i can imagine you were bullied I was bullied for different reasons but I know why you're bullied. Yeah. Because I think I have bullied people like you because yeah. of the fact that I've also actually you're bullied confident. people as well. Like I bullied enough. people but like Sandy so because why are you so confident? Why are you so sure of yourself? Why do mm. you have interests that are your own when all of us don't know what like we are defined by everything? Mm. So I can imagine what you're saying anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so continue. my mom has, has always been that voice. And funny enough, even when I was at it, I used to tell my mom, like even with the first the first big <laughs> like, At least you could so tell funny. your mom or your dad. So I couldn't weird. tell anybody. Because <laughs> Bashima need to Bashima yo bra. And it's it's actually so funny. I don't know how I was able to but like I've I don't know how it happened but I was able to tell me, obviously I wouldn't like go deep into details it, but I was able to my mom has been my friend actually let me just rather say mm. that my mom has been my friend from I started realizing I started I realized that when I was in university that my mom had been my friend but my mom has been my friend through 
like a lot of uh, like a lot of things and she had has always been the voice that always says um would say okay you know what what about you how do you um how do you feel um what does this mean to you mm. you know all of those things what is it saying to you like what do you want to do about it the reason i'm putting context into this is even in my first after my first heartbreak i because of that thing that my mom has given me all the time in my first heartbreak being a child as i was i was thinking about okay even if this happened is it really you what mm. did you do in this thing did you do anything that could have caused this no i you wish know? i had that maybe i would have <laughs> gone <at> less and <laughs> i would not have lost weight till i was a size 26 but <laughs> With that being said, if you guys don't mind in the comment section, what was your first heartbreak? Actually, what please, was your first please, heartbreak? please. There's this one picture, guys, where um, I like my head was the heaviest thing in my whole body. My, I was kidding. Ooh, just so, and I couldn't even tell my parents about that yeah. because whoa so in the comment section i just said yeah. i'm i'm stressed because my marks are failing but my marks were failing because i was going through it because of what love so in the comment section just let us know how did that 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 first <laughs> what was the heartbreak that defined your life and, and uh, like how did you guys get over it like how afterwards how did you get over it anyway being a child as i was after the first heartbreak i was thinking about all of those things like what what did i do whatever and then it just made me realize like okay you know what i'm never i don't want to be in the position where it's my it's my oh it's it's my main fuck up that ended the relationship like, oh yeah like i'm the one that fucked somebody up but it's just a general rule that i have in life that like even i don't want somebody to have something bad to say about me based on something that that i did mm. obviously people can have their own perception of like things like but that. you but, you mm. you can safely say that i yes. didn't intentionally do yes. anything to yes. mess up the situation yes. it wasn't me that went and fucked you oh sorry i'm sorry a lot it wasn't me that went and screwed you over it wasn't me that went and ruined your life or you get mm. what i'm saying that intentionally intentionally, intentionally mm. went and my actions were based on i'm going to mess your life up no, so, and for me i don't think like in high school when people broke your heart they were intentionally trying to mess your life up no for me my breakup it was it felt not like even, not were, even, for me no, it, like, no but i break. feel like it it feels like they were trying to mess but no it's just like someone didn't just care no, like this like, care like if someone doesn't give a shit that's and what I'm you, saying. your feelings get hurt. That thing wasn't even about a thing that like they were trying to hurt me or whatever. Mm. That's why I was also able to just literally get over it, even if like mm. my friends were laughing at me. Because now for me, like that that thing wasn't even. It didn't. It, to be honest, it wasn't even. A, now that I'm like older, that thing wasn't even a real relationship. But obviously, when you're in high school, it feels it like feels, it's it one, feel, and yeah, then it, it feels exactly, like you're the stupid fool. Exactly. So from that point forward, because I was putting context into, it, but from that point forward, I knew that like it's okay. I will love again, and when I love again, I'm going to give myself fully. Or and I'm going to and I'm going to move. I know what I want, whatever. You know what I mean? From that point forward. At that point, I it's not like I was looking for a relationship in high school or whatever. But like I just knew it was like, okay, if I go into a relationship, it's again, it's fine. I'll give myself. It doesn't matter. Like it's okay. So yes, you yeah. giving yourself was always like a thing. Like yeah, in a relationship, ready. it's it's yeah. If I'm in a, if, to... exactly, if I'm in a relationship, then I'm in a relationship. It means okay, we're trying to do something. Like in high school, it wasn't like I'm going to have like goal to get married to you or whatever. But like one relationship right now, whatever the relationship is or whatever. But I'm fully, I'm fully in that, you know. Because even in even the relationship I was in before you, I remember we had that. We remember, yeah, no, I remember we had a chat. Uh, I had a chat with that ex 
like after we broke up that like oh did you think we're gonna get married or whatever you know so things like that and i was like nah it's not like i thought we we're gonna get married i didn't think that far but like we're in a relationship dog like we're in a relationship at least respect yeah respect the respect. fact that we're in a relationship exactly because once you that for thing. me like it's once you establish that this is a relationship at least respect it exactly. or something like yeah so this long three hour chat that i was just having was putting context into the fact that i knew what i wanted by the time we were getting together mm. so it was a breath of fresh air and it was very important for me that you also knew what you wanted and that helped us and another thing that was very interesting about us mm -hmm. is that we dreamt together even from the first moment yeah. we dreamt big together from get-go we wanted like like we've even won. though we met in varsity we were doing our like degrees and everything mm. i've all i i even even to this day like even though i'm working like a job and everything there's certain things that i've wanted and i always want and i'm going to get and he's actually in the path of what we always dreamed of and everything like we dream bigger than what the norm was and it was so crazy that we met and like and you're like oh shit like i'm not the crazy one here yeah. dreaming about like mm. oh yeah i'm not i'm not just gonna work a corporate job i'm gonna be like an entrepreneur and like define a whole industry mm. you're going oh, to change like, people's lives i'm gonna you're change going to people's change. life you're i'm gonna to, employ you're going to impact the world i'm gonna employ actually. 50 people <laughs> like you know when you you are dreaming of it alone and then everyone in your industry just like be like get 80 percent max and please let's work for i don't want to mention any like let's just you know yeah, and then you meet the someone job, and yeah. then and then they're like muffle oh damn i was going through our social media profiles and like to put together images and videos like to post and stuff for our 8th anniversary like there's so many things that we used to dream about that now are normal in our, our life one of them being this this little staycation that we're having for our anniversary this was a dream i've i remember i used to plan trips in in varsity i used to plan not not really plan but like outline be trips like outline and, trips and, and yeah like, like in everything and now we're doing this like at least Five times a year, four or five times a year, we're doing that. I remember how with the car, <laughs> the, the blue Guys, polo, please, the, I was, yeah, you had a car, and for me, I, I didn't remember. Have a car. I was, you I had made your my mom's, mom's car. car my own. <laughs> yeah, but for me, I remember if, um, there was this time I was in varsity, and um, I was actually friends with some rich girl. She was not rich, 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 but you know, like upper middle class where like all her friends had cars they had cars and everything like it was so cute and nice and i was the uh, walk journey walk of the situation for me it was fine one thing about me um i think now my first heartbreak defined me in the terms of like i got comfortable with who i am what i am and i was okay with it so by the time in varsity even when i had like the rich friends and everything i always knew my position i was not rich at that point and i could afford what i could afford but that was not my lifestyle it was not me because i knew at the time i was not a rich girl so i was not even trying to impress them i was not even trying because i remember there was a time i went to even the 21st party i was like Yes, well, they would be, oh, you look so nice, everything. And they're like, what are you wearing? And I was like, Mr. Price, kid you not. They were like, what? I've never even went into Mr. Price. I was like, what? What do you even <laughs> mean? There are people that have never even went to Mr. Price. And then there was this other time we were in final year. And I was like, yo, you know, as soon as I get a job, I'm going to get a car. I'm going to get a car. And then um, I, it was literally a dream of mine. When the anti album dropped, 
to play the anti-album in my oh. car. I would have a car and then I would play the anti-album and it would be like a jam in my car and everything. First year of after like leaving varsity head and you think, ah, this is a long dream. So when I got my car and I, I mm. played the anti-album, even to this day, when I play it, I feel so blessed that we dreamed those things and and it happened and i'm glad that i dreamed them with you and when we achieved them we we're so excited it's like mm. oh my god we dreamt of this and now it's normal life but every time like any song from the anti-album plays when i'm i'm in my car i'm like yes i'm driving my car mm. i don't care if it's like a manual from 2016 it that's doesn't like matter. it doesn't at the like at the time and even now it's such a huge blessing it's so it's that so i was huge. able to like achieve a dream and i was able to do it with you because we dreamt together and mm. we dreamt big even where we stay right now Mm. Even in fact, even the first place that we stayed together at the second place, this is now the third place. But everywhere we've stayed together, it's we've always dreamt about those things because, mm. like, it was always things that were like difficult, and we used to pray. Now it's normal things. Now we're even dreaming about the house, you know, and 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 things that, and it's going to come to pass. So it's just, it's just a blessing to be together, to have found each other, and throughout these eight years, um, not be the cause of struggle and life mm. changes be the things that we struggle and struggle with. And it's great that we have each other because even through those struggles, we overcome those challenges because we're together. And also most importantly, because God put us together, and because God always is, God is actually the foundation of our relationship. I mm -hmm. said this even very early in our relationship as well. And he's the foundation of our relationship. He, he's taken us through these eight years. Our love has, he's taken us through the eight years, but our love has sustained us. Mm. Us choosing each other has sustained us. And us wanting to be together and, and, respecting, and, and respecting, respecting, wanting, mm. intentional, being for each other, yes. trying, even when it was hard. Yes. And hard not being, oh, you cheated. It was so hard to love you. Hard being, I was going through career changes. Or, 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 that was hard. And the, even the mistakes the, that we make, mm. even the mistakes we make mm. are not mistakes that are, oh, I mean, but it's, it's not mistakes. It's like not mistakes that, I think that's that, the like, difficult. Yeah, but we, we the break, difficult yeah. parts of relationship is that, like, as individuals, because we come from two separate worlds, mm. we come from thing. We make separate mistakes. Yeah. We have our own conditions. We have, yeah. like, even I, I even say, even some if tw even twins have different perspectives yes. on life, yes. because what you guys could both be working right now you could have the same experiences at the same time but maybe your mom gave you more banana than the other one like yeah. those type of things so even if for the past eight years we've literally been together we've experienced different parts of life mm -hmm. and for us to have been able to help each other through that through our struggles that were individuals and we were together and helped each other through that, it's such a huge thing. It's it's it's, it's really a huge. huge thing. One thing in closing that I want to say is never forget to be with somebody that likes you. Not love. Yeah. Like somebody that guys likes like you. Your, somebody that like likes you and enjoys being like, with you. I be, I was in this class <laughs> and um we we're doing this series at work and then they talked about the fact that love comes from from need the fact that like people need certain things and then that's how love develops but 
a lot of people will love something but they won't really like it yeah. because it's based on need and the feeling but please be with people you like because there's people who be like times because people, people who like you they'll choose they'll choose to like if, people like if you like, like something you guys they will you. choose you they'll choose you too. like i'm on holiday i like liverpool i chose to watch liverpool mm. instead of recording this podcast earlier <laughs> <laughs> it's not love that Sandy so doesn't love you housemates <laughs> I'm kidding love is that feeling that stays there it's there but there's sometimes we're like you annoy yeah. me but the fact that I like you so much has actually helped Bo lock down like I, I'm I with someone that I actually up, really. like. I'm not with <laughs> someone that like. Oh, I loved the. I love. I love what you made me feel at a certain time. Then like it finished, but because I love love that, like we stayed together. Cause there were the like for a lot of relationships there was a time like before lockdown, you can actually be in a relationship and avoid your partner. Oh, but for you me. Can. I don't want to avoid you because I like you. I like... Exactly. You know what we didn't speak about because we were busy. Yep, yep, yep. We have shared interests. Like, yeah. we are compatible, but it's also with the shared interests. We are movie geeks. We love movies. We love Marvel. We love laughing. Um, we actually laugh quite a lot. We okay, we not love laughing, but we have a good sense of humor. Like <laughs> everything is funny, and um, we just we just generally like each other. So small things are not like even a big deal. And uh, bra, like you you know before you date someone, that's your person, your person. Um, if you are not even comfortable with yourself, or like farting, or like if you gain weight and your body changes, you think, oh yeah, this person's not gonna like me, whatever, whatever, whatever. And you're not, you're not comfortable, and you hide and everything. But once you are at a place that's like, bra, yeah, nah, that's the nicest. It's, it's I know, I'm, I'm, I'm not even saying much, but we are very no, blessed. No, saying a lot, my love. I'm not very blessed and. It's, yo, guys, it doesn't even feel like it's been eight years. Yeah, it's it feels still, like one year. Yeah, <laughs> I years. hope you still like, have it just feels, tw- like early I was just, more years. Earlier, I was just thinking, like, do people see us being at the hotel? And, like, do they see us, like, being old people? Like, um, yeah, the, it's, it's normal for them to be at a hotel. Because in my mind, I'm still, in, like, I'm still, like, We're a varsity still so, yeah, person. Like, like, still, like so, so oh, yeah, this is like, our first time doing like, room service. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> this is our first room service. Yeah, anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning into our podcast. And if you're listening to us on Spotify, Apple Music, or any other podcasting place, if there's a follow or a join or subscribe or whatever in that place, please, please guys, right please do the right thing. Share us. If you're seeing us on YouTube, please do subscribe, like, make sure you like, especially if you're this far, guys. Like, share, and we'll see you in two weeks another episode. Bye. Bye.